Yes, I have tricks in my pocket. I have things up my sleeve, but I am the opposite of a stage magician. He gives you illusion, the appearance of truth. I give you truth, in the pleasant disguise of illusion. To begin with, I turn back time. I reverse it to that quaint period, the 30s, when the middle class of America was matriculating in a school for the blind. Their eyes had failed them, they had failed their eyes. So they're having their fingers pressed forcibly down on the fiery brown alphabet of a dissolving economy. In Spain, there was revolution. Here, there was only shouting and confusion. In Spain, there was Guernica. Here, there were disturbances of labor, sometimes pretty violent, and otherwise peaceful cities, such as Chicago, Cleveland, St. Louis. This is the social background of the play. The play is memory. Being a memory play, it is sentimental. It is delighted. It is not realistic. I am the narrator of the play, and also a character in it. The other characters are my mother, Amanda, my sister, Laura, and a gentleman caller who appears in the final scenes. He is the most realistic character in the play being an emissary from a world of reality which we were somehow set apart from. But since I have poet's weakness for symbols, I am using this character also as a symbol. He is the long delayed but always expected something that we live for. There is a fifth character in the play who doesn't appear except in this large and life-size photograph over the match place. This is our father who left us a long time ago. He was a telephone man who fell in love with long distances. He quit his job at the telephone company and skipped the light fantastic out of town. Last we heard from him was a picture postcard from Mazatlan, off the Pacific coast of Mexico, containing a message of two words. Hello. Goodbye. And no address. I think the rest of the play will explain itself. Tom? Yes, Mother? We can't say grace until you come to the table. Coming, Mother. Honey, don't push with your fingers. If you have to push with something, the thing to push with is just cross a leg. And two, two, I know it's how to increase with their stomach, which enables them to digest food without mastication. But human beings are supposed to chew their food before they swallow it down. Eat food. Leisure design. Really enjoy it. Well cooked meal has lots of delicate flavors which have to be held in mouth for appreciation. So treat your food, give yourself a glance a chance to function. I have not enjoyed one bite of this dinner because of your cousin direction on how to eat it. It's you that make me rush through meals here. Hawk like attention to every bite I take. It's sick and spoils my appetite. All this talk of animal secretion, salivary glands, mastication. Temperament like a metropolitan star. You're not excuse from the table. I'm getting a cigarette. You smoke too much. I'll bring you the long lunch. No, sister, no, sister. You be the lady this time and I'll be the servant. I'm already out. Resume your table, sister. I want you to say fresh and pretty. For gentlemen callers. I'm not expecting any gentlemen callers. Why? Sometimes they come in these expected. I remember one Sunday afternoon, Blue Mountain. I know it's coming. Yeah, so let her tell it. Again. She loves to tell it. One Sunday afternoon, in Blue Mountain. Your mother received 17 gentlemen callers. Why, sometimes we weren't chairs enough to accommodate them all. We had to send servants to fetch folding chairs from the parish house. How did you entertain these gentlemen callers? I understood the art of conversation. I bet you could talk. Girls in those days knew how to talk, I can tell you. Yes? It wasn't enough for a girl to be possessed of a pretty face. Girls were bigger. Although I wasn't slight in either respect, so I need to have a little wit on to me all occasions. What did you talk about? Things have been quite going on in the world. Never anything coarse or common or vulgar. My callers were gentlemen. Oh, among my callers were some of the most prominent young planters in the Mississippi Delta. Planters and sons of planters. There was young Champ Laughlin, who later became vice president of the Delta Planters Bank. Happy Stevenson, who drowned in the lake how much his widow 150 thousand in government bonds. There was the Couture Brothers, Wesley and Bates. Bates was one of my bright particular bows. 
got a quarrel with that wild Wainwright boy. They shot out on the floor of Moonlight Casino. Faith was shot through the stomach. Dada and his ambulance on the way to Memphis. His widow was also well provided for. Came in at eight or ten thousand acres. That's all. Never loved her. Married him on the rebound. Carried my picture on him the night he died. And then there was that boy. And every girl in the Delta had her set cap for, set her cap for. That bright, brilliant young Fitzy boy from Green County. What did he leave his widow? He never married. Gracious, he told me so all my old admirers had turned up their coats for the daisies. Isn't this the first you mentioned that still survives? That Fitzy boy went north and made a fortune for himself. Came to know him as the Wolf of Wall Street. He had the Midas touch. Whatever he touched turned to gold. And I could have been Miss Duncan J. Fitz, you mind you. But the picture father. Well, they want me to the table. No, dear. You go and fret and study your, study your typewriter charts. Practice your shorthand a little. I want you to stay fresh and pretty. How many gentlemen college you suppose we're going to entertain this afternoon? I don't believe we're going to be receiving any mother. What? No one? Not one? Not one gentleman caller? You must be joking. There must have been a flood. There must have been a tornado. It isn't a flood. It's not a tornado, mother. I'm just not caught there like you were in Blue Mountain. Mother, I'm afraid I'm going to be an old maid. Because you wanted to make me think you were still going to Ruben Camp's 
business college? It wasn't as bad as it sounds. I went inside places to get warmed up. Inside where? I went in the art museum, the birdhouse, the zoo. I visited the penguins every day. Sometimes I did without lunch and went to the movies. Lately, I've been spending most of my afternoons in the jewel box, that big glass house where they raise the tropical flowers. Who did this all to this evening? Just for a deception? Why? Oh, Mother, when you're disappointed, you get that awful suffering look on your face, like the picture of Jesus' mother in the museum. Hush! I, I couldn't face it. So, what are we going to do for the rest of our lives? Stay at home and watch the parade go by? Amuse ourselves with the glass menagerie, darling? Eternally play those worn out porn graph records your father left as a painful reminder of him? You won't have a business career. He gave that up because it gave us nervous indigestion. What if they're left with dependency all their lives? Or I know so well what becomes of unmarried women who aren't prepared to occupy a position? I've seen such pitiful cases in the South. Barely tolerated spinsters living upon the grudging patronage of a sister's husband or brother's wife. Stuck away in some little mouse shop of a room, cursed by one in laws to visit another. Little bird like them without any nesting. Eating the crust of humility all their lives. Is that the future we've mapped out for ourselves? Where's the only alternative I can think of? This is it a very pleasant alternative? is it? Of course, some girl do marry. Have you ever liked some boy? Yes, I liked one once. I came across his picture a while ago. He gave you this picture? No, it's in the yearbook. Oh, a high school boy. Yes, his name was Jim. Here he is in the pirate's pendant. What? He got part of the senior class put on. He had a wonderful voice, and we sat across the aisle from each other Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays in the yacht. Here he is with the silver cup of debating. See his grin? He must have had a jolly disposition. He used to call me Blue Roses. Why did he call you such a name as that? When I had that attack of fluorosis, he asked me what was the matter when I came back. I said fluorosis. He thought I said Blue Roses. So that's what he always called me after that. Whenever he saw me, he called him, Hello, Blue Roses! I didn't care for the girl you have as much. Emily lies in fact. Emily was the best dressed girl at Sullivan. She never struck me though. It's being sincere. It says in the personal section they're engaged. That was six years ago. They must be married by now. Girls that aren't cut out for a business period usually wind up married to a nice man. Sister, that's what you'll do. But mother! Yes? I'm crippled! Nonsense. Laura, I told you never, never use that word. Why, you're not crippled. You have a little defect. Hardly noticeable even. When people have some slight disadvantage like that, they go get other things to make up for it. Without charm and vivacity and charm. That's all you have to do. One thing your father had plenty of was charm. Role in mother's calculations. It became an obsession. Like some archetype of the universal unconscious, the image of the gentleman color haunted our small apartment. An evening at home rarely passed that some illusion to this image, this specter, this hope. And on evenings when he wasn't mentioned, his presence still hung in mother's preoccupied look or my sister's frightened, apologetic manner, hung like a sentence passed upon the wing fields. Mother was a woman of action as well as words. She began to take logical steps in the planned direction. Late that winter and in the early spring, realizing that extra money would be needed to properly feather the nest and plume the bird, she conducted a vigorous campaign on the telephone, roping in subscribers to one of those magazines for matrons titled The Homemaker's Companion. It was a type of journal which featured the serialized sublimations of ladies of letters who think in terms of delicate cup-like breasts, rich creamy thighs, slim tapering waists, eyes like wood smoke in autumn, Fingers that soothe and caress like strains of music. Bodies as powerful as Etruscan sculpture. Hey, Scott. This is Amanda Wakefield. How are you, honey? We missed you the day our last Monday. I said to myself, she's probably suffering with that sinus condition. How is that sinus condition? Horse! 
Have it have mercy. You are a Christian martyr. Yes, honey, that's what you are, a Christian martyr. Well, I now just happen to, mo to notice that your subscription to the companion is just now. Yes, it expires with the next issue, honey. Just when that one who wonderful new serial like Bessie Mae Hopper is getting off to such an exciting start. Oh, honey, it's something that you can't miss. Remember how Gone with the Wind took everybody by storm? You simply couldn't go out to have read it. All everybody talked was Scarred O'Hara. Well, this is the book that critics are already comparing to Gone with the Wind. It's Gone with the Wind post World War Generation. What? Burning? Oh, honey, don't let them burn. You go check the oven. I'll hold the wire. Heavens. I think she's hung up. What in God's God name am I supposed to do? Senses. Have you gone out of your senses? I have. I should have driven out. What's the matter with you, big, big idiot? I've got no thing, no single thing. No more voice. But I can call my own. Stop that idiot. shouting! Yes, you did. You confiscated my books. You had the nerve. I took that horrible novel back to my brain. Yes, that hideous book by that insane Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> I can't control the out of these minds or the people who came in them. But I won't allow such filth to be brought into my house. No, 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 house, no! House? Who pays rent on it? Who makes a slave of himself? Don't you dare to! No, I, I mustn't say things. I've got to just... Let me tell you! I won't hear anymore. You will I'm hear going more. Out. You come right back in! Oh, go! Tom, come! In fact, there's Tom Wayne I know more influence from you. I'm not here speaking to you. I am at the end of my patience! What do you think I'm at, Mother? Aren't I supposed to have any patience to reach the end of... I know, it seems unimportant to you what I'm doing, what I want to do, having a little difference between them. You don't think that I think you're doing things that you're ashamed of. That's why you act like this. I don't believe you go to the movies. Nobody goes to the movies night after night. Nobody in the right mind goes to movies as often as you pretend to. Movies that don't start at midnight. And movies that don't let out nearly 2 a.m. Come in stumbling, muttering yourself like a maniac. You get three hours sleep and then you go to work. Oh, I can picture the way you're doing down there. Moping and doping because you're in no condition. No, I'm in no condition. What right have you to jeopardize your job? Jeopardize the security Listen! You think I'm crazy about the warehouse? You think I'm in love with the Continental Shoemakers? You think I want to spend 55 years in that Celotex interior? Look, I'd rather somebody picked up a crowbar and battered out my brains than go back mornings. But I go. I go, every time you come in yelling that goddamn, rise and shine, rise and shine, I think to myself, how lucky dead people are. But I get up. I go, for $65 a month, I give up all that I dream of doing and being ever. And you say self, self's all I ever think of. But listen, if self is what I thought of, mother, I'd be where he is. Gone as far as the system of transportation reaches. Don't grab at me, Where mother. Where are we going? I'm going to the movies. Don't believe that. Why? I'm going to opium dens. Yes, dens of vice and criminal hangouts, mother. I joined the hoping gang. I am a hired assassin. I carry a Tommy gun in a violin case. I run a string of cat houses in the valley. They call me Killer. Killer Wingfield. <laughs> I'm living a double life. Simple, honest warehouse worker by day and by night. A dynamic czar of the underworld, mother. I go to gambling casinos. I throw away fortunes on the roulette table. I wear an eye patch and a false mustache. Sometimes I'll even put on green whiskers. On those occasions, they call me El Diablo. Oh, I can tell you many things to make you sleepless. My enemies plan to dynamite this place. They're going to blow us all sky high tonight, and I'll be glad, very happy. And so will you. You'll fly up, up, up on your broomstick over Blue Mountain with your 17 gentlemen callers, you ugly, babbling old witch. My glass. I mean, Ashley, I won't speak to you until you apologize.
looking for a door key. Where have you been all this time? Been to the movies. All this time? At the movies? Yes, there was a very long program. There was a garbled picture, Mickey Mouse, and the travelogue, and the newsreel, and the preview of coming attractions. And then there was an organ solo and a collection for the milk funds simultaneously, which resulted in a huge fight between a fat lady and an usher. Do you have to say everything? Of course. Oh, I forgot. There was a big stage show. The headliner on this stage show was Malvolio the Magician. He performed wonderful tricks, many of them, such as pouring water between two pitchers. You know, first it turned into wine, then it turned to beer, then it turned to whiskey. I know it was whiskey it finally turned into because he needed somebody to come up out of the audience to help him, and I came up. Both shows. Kentucky straight bourbon. Very generous fellow. He gave stupid ears. This is his magic scar. You can have it, Laura. You wave it over the goldfish bowl, they fly away canaries. Wave it over the canary cage, and they run swimming in a goldfish bowl. The wonderfulest trick of all was the coffin trick. We nailed him into a coffin, and he got out of the coffin without removing one nail. <laughs> Gee, that's a trick that would come in handy right about now. Get me out of this two by four situation. <laughs> What are you shushing me for? You'll wake up, mother. Goody, goody. Pay your back for all those rise and shines. You know, it don't take much intelligence to get yourself into a nail coffin, Laura. But who in hell ever got himself out of one without removing one nail? What is it, Mother, that you want to discuss? 
Laura. Oh, Laura. Do you know how Laura is? So quiet, but still water runs deep. She notices things that I think she broods about them. A few days ago, I came in and she was crying. About what? You. Me? She has an idea that you're not happy here. Okay, for that idea. What gives her any idea? However, you do act strangely. I'm not criticizing, understand that. I know your ambitions do not like the warehouse. That like everybody in the whole wide world you've had to make sacrifices. But Tom, Tom, life's not easy. It calls for Spartan endurance. There's so much in my heart that I cannot describe to you. I've never told you, but I, I loved your father. I know, Mother. And you, when I see you taking after his way, staying out late, and I had been drinking that night and in that terrifying condition. Laura says you hate the apartment. You go out at night to get away from it. Is that true, Tom? No. You say there's so much in your heart that you can't describe to me. That's true of me, too. There's so much in my heart that I can't describe to you. So why don't we respect each other's... But why, Tom? Are you always so restless? Where do you go to night? I go to the movies. Why? I go to the movies because I like adventure. Adventure is something I don't get much of at work, so I go to the movies. But you go to the movies entirely too much. Like a lot of adventure. Most young men find adventure in their careers. Then most young men are not employed in a warehouse. The world is full of young men employed at warehouses and offices and factories. Do all of them find adventure in their careers? They do, or they do without it. Not everybody has a craze for adventure. Man is by instinct a lover, a hunter, a fighter. None of those instincts are given much play at the warehouse. Man is by instinct. Don't put instinct at me. Instinct is something that humans have gotten away from. It belongs to animals. Christian adults don't want it. What do Christian adults want then, Mother? Superior things. Things of the mind and spirit. Only animals have to satisfy instinct. Surely your aim is somewhat higher than that of theirs than monkeys, pigs. I reckon they're not. You're joking. However, that isn't what I wanted to discuss. Look, I'm too late to discuss Sit anything. Sit down. Well, do you want me punching right at the warehouse? You have five minutes. All right. What do you want us to discuss? We have to be making some plans and provisions for Laura. She's older than me. Two years. There's nothing to happen. She just drifts the law. Right, we hardly have to just fix the law. Maybe she's just the type that people call home girls. There's no such type. And the first thing that it is, unless the home occurs with my husband. What? Oh, I see the handwriting on the wall. As plain as I see the nose in front of my face. It's terrifying. More and more, you remind me of your father. Late, a whole hours without explanation. Then must. Goodbye. And with me in the bag to hold, I saw that letter you got from the Merchant Marines. I know what you're dreaming of. I'm not standing here blindfolded. Very well, then. Then do it. But not until there's somebody to take your place. How do you mean? As soon as Laura's married, a home of her own, independent, why like then you can go wherever you please. On land, on sea, whatever the way the wind blows you. But until that time, you have to look out for your sister. They don't send me because I'm old and don't matter. I say for your sister because she's young and dependent. Enrolled her in business college, dismal failure. Friend or so and made her sick to the stomach. I took her down to the young people to at the church. Another fiasco. She spoke to nobody. Nobody spoke to her. Now she does is fool those pieces of glass and play those worn out records. What kind of life is that for a girl to lead? What can I do about it? Overcome selfishness. Self, self, self. It's all you have to think of. Tom, I had said I'd like to ask I don't you. I have the time. Down at the warehouse, aren't there some nice young men? No. There must be some. Mother! If I don't want this clean living, doesn't drink, and F not for sister. What? For sister to me. Get acquainted. Oh my gosh. Will you? Will you? Will you, dear? Yes.
Ella Cartwright. This is Amanda Wingfield. How are you, darling? How is that kidney condition? Horrors. Heaven have mercy. You are a Christian martyr. Yes, honey, that's what you are, a Christian martyr. When I just happened to notice in my little red book that your subscription to the companion has just run out. Oh, I knew that you wouldn't want to miss the wonderful new serial starting this next issue. It's my best friend, Anne Hopper, the first thing she's written since Honey Number Three. Wasn't that a strange and interesting story? This one's even longer, I believe. It has a sophisticated society background. It's all about that horsey sound on Long Island. of the alley. We could see them kissing behind ash pits and telephone poles. This was compensation for lives that passed like mine, without any change or adventure. Adventure and change were imminent in this year. Waiting around the corner for these kids, suspended in the midst of Roberta's gun, caught in the folds of Chamberlain's umbrella. In Spain, there was garden gun. But here, there was only hot swing music, bars, and liquor, and dance halls, and movies, and sex that hung in the gloom like a chandelier and reflected the night with brief deceptive rainbows. All the world is waiting for bombardments. Mother, this boy is no one to make a fuss over. Do you realize this is the 
first young man to be brought over for sister. It's terrible, dreadful, disgraceful. It's sister has never had a single gentleman call her. If you're going to make such a fuss over this, I'll call him up right now. I'll tell him not to come. You simply won't do anything of the kind. Nothing offends people worse than broken engagement. But some of these will have to work like a Turk. We won't be brilliant, but we will pass inspection. They haven't got that new sofa. I'm making payments on a foil and I'll have sent out. Put the chin curtain on, they'll write things up. Of course, I hope to have these walls repapered. What is this young man's name? His name is O'Connor. That, of course, means fish. Tomorrow's Friday. I'll have that salmon milk with turkey's dressing. What does this young man do? Does he work at the warehouse? Uh, of course. Well, so I know him. Tom, he doesn't drink. Why did you ask me that? His father did. Don't get started on that. He does drink then? Not that I know of. Make sure. Be certain. The last thing I want for sisters is one drinks. I think being a little bit premature, Mr. O'Connor has not yet appeared on the scene. But will tomorrow to meet your sister? And what do I know of his character? Nothing. Old wives are better off than maids of drunkards. Be still. Lots of fellows meet girls whom they don't marry. We'll talk sensibly, Tom, and don't be sarcastic. What is this young man's position at the warehouse? So my position is that of a shipping clerk, mother. Sounds like a fairly responsible job to me. The sort of job you'd be in if you had a little bit more get up. What is this salary? Have you any idea? Just to be approximately eighty-five dollars a month. Well, not princely. Twenty more than I make. Yes, how well I know. But for a family man, twenty-five. $85 a month is not much more than you can get on by. Yes, but Mr. O'Connor is not a family man. He might be, might he? Sometime in the future? I see. Plans and provisions. You are the only young man I know who doesn't realize that the future comes the present, the present, the past, and the past turns into everlasting regret if you don't plan for it. I will think that over and see what I can make of it. Don't be supercilious with your mother. Tell me more about this. What do you call him? James D. O'Connor. The D is for Delaney. Irish on both sides. Gracious. And doesn't drink. Shall I call him up and ask him right this minute? The only way to find out about these things is to make discreet inquiries at the proper moments. When I was a girl in Blue Mountain and it was expected that a young boy drank, the girl whose attention he'd been receiving, if any girl was, would speak to the minister of his church, or rather her father would, if her father was living. Sort of feel about the young man's character. That is the way to keep a girl from making a tragic mistake. Then how did you happen to make a tragic mistake? That innocent look on your father had everyone fooled. He smiled. The world was enchanted. No girl could do worse than put herself up with the mercy of a handsome appearance. I hope Mr. Connor's not too good looking. No, he's not too good looking. He's covered in freckles and has much to nose. He's not right down homely, though. Not right down homely, just medium homely, I'd say. Characters want to look for a man. That's what I've always said, Mother. You never said anything of the sort, and I hope you wouldn't give it much thought. Don't be suspicious of me. <laughs> At least I hope he's the type that's up and coming. I think he really goes in for self improvement. What reason have you to say that? He goes to night school. Splendid! What does he do? I mean, study. Radio engineering and public speaking. That means he has visions of being advanced in the world. Any young man who studies public speaking is aiming to have an executive job one day. And public and radio engineering? A thing for the future. Both these facts are very, very illuminating. The thing is sort of the sort of thing a mother should know. Come call it any young man who comes calling on his daughter. <coughs> Seriously or not. One little warning. He doesn't know about Laura. I didn't know that we had dark old cheery motives. I just asked, hey, why don't you have dinner with us? He said, sure. That was the whole conversation. I bet it was. You're as eloquent as an oyster. But when he sees Flora, and he sees how sweet and pretty and kind she is, he'll think he's lucky stars he was asked to dinner. Mother, you mustn't expect too much of Flora. What do you mean? Flora seems all those things to you and me because she's ours and we love her. We don't even know if she's crippled anymore. Don't say crippled. No, I never allow that word to be used. But face the facts, she is. That's not all. What do you mean, not all? Laura is very different from other girls. I think the difference is all to her advantage. Not quite all. In the eyes of others, strangers. She's terribly shy, and she lives in the world of her own. A world of little less ornaments. 
Don't things make her seem a little peculiar to go to that side of the house? Don't say peculiar. Face the facts. It is. In what ways is she peculiar, may I ask? She lives in a world of her own. All she does is play those photograph records, and that's all. Uh, where are you going? I'm going to the movies. Not to the movies. Every night to the movies. I don't believe you always go to the movies. to a washroom to write poems when business was slack at the warehouse. And while the other boys regarded me with suspicious hostility, Jim took a more humorous attitude toward me. Gradually his attitude affected the others, and soon they began to smile at me, as one would smile at an oddly fashioned dog who trots across their path at some distance. I knew that Jim and Laura had known each other a little in Soldan. I had often heard Laura speak admiringly of his voice. I don't know if Jim had remembered Laura, in high school, Laura had been as unintrusive as Jim had been astonishing. Even if he did remember her, it was likely not as my sister, for when I asked him about dinner, he said, You know, Shakespeare, I never thought of you as the type to have folks. He was about to discover that I did. Honey, 
there's no more room for dog holes, but I just still kept bringing in more dog holes whenever, wherever I saw them. I say, stop, stop. I see dog holes. I made the young men help me gather the dog holes. The young young men and her dog holes. Finally, there were no more bases to hold them. Every available space was filled with dog holes. No place to hold them. All right, I'll hold them myself. Malaria fever, and then drop holes, and then this boy. I hope they get here before it's about rain. I gave your brother and Mr. Mr. Connor love to change so he they can take the service car home. What did you say his name was? O'Connor. What is his first name? I don't remember. Oh yes, I do. It was Jim. No, it's Jim. Yes, that was it. It was Jim. No, no, the Jim though. Nice. Are you sure his name is Jim O'Connor? Yes. Why? Is he the one that Tom used to know in high school? I don't think so. I think he just got to know him down the warehouse. It was a Jim O'Connor we both knew in high school. If that is the one that Tom is bringing to dinner, you'll have to excuse me. I won't come to the table. What sort of nonsense is this? You asked me once if I ever liked a boy. Don't you remember I showed you this boy's picture? You mean that boy you showed me in the yearbook? Yes, that boy. Oh, Laura, Laura, were you all involved with that boy? I don't know, Mother. All I know is I couldn't sit at the table if it were him. It won't be him. It isn't the least bit likely. But whether it is or not, you will come to the table. You will not be excused. It'll have to be, Mother. I don't intend to humor your silliness, Laura. So you sit down and compose yourself until they arrive. Tom will grab his key. You have to let them in until they arrive. Oh, Mother, you answer the door. I'll be in the kitchen. Busy. Oh, Mother, please answer the door. Don't make me do it. I've got to finish the dressing for the salmon. Bus, bus, silliness over judgment hallway. Being able to square up to people and hold your own on any social level. Tom? 
Yes, Mother? Is that you and Mr. O'Connor? Yes, Mother. Well, you just make yourselves comfortable in there. Yes, Mother. And Mr. O'Connor would like to wash his hands. Oh, no, no, thank you. I took care of that at the warehouse. Tom? Yes? Mr. Mendoza has been speaking to me about you. Favorably. What do you think? Well, you're going to be out of a job if you don't wake up. I am waking up. Show no signs. Signs are interior. I'm planning to change. I'm planning on putting myself into a future that doesn't include Mr. Mendoza or the warehouse or even a night school course in public speaking. What are you guessing about? It? I'm tired of the movies. Movies? Yes, movies. Just look at them. Hollywood people. All of them. Just, they're all glamorous. They hobby that album with pop. They're supposed to have all the adventures for everyone in America. Well, everyone in America sits in a dark room and watches them have them. Until there's a war, that's when adventure becomes available to the masses. Everyone's dish, not just Gables. Goody, goody, it's our turn. You watch the South Sea Island, adventures of our own, be exotic, far off. But I'm not patient. I'm tired of the movies, and I'm about to move. Move? Yes. When? Soon. Where? Where? I'm boiling. No, I seem dreamy, but inside, I'm boiling. Whenever I pick up a shoe, I shudder a little, thinking about how short life is, and what I'm supposed to do, whatever that means. I know it doesn't have anything to do with shoes, except there's something to wear on a traveler's feet. Look, boy, I remember. The union of merchant seat. That my juice's mouth. Instead of a light bill. But you'll regret it when you turn the lights off. I won't be here. What about your mother? I'm like my father. The bastard son of a bastard. See what he's smiling in that picture over there? And he's been absent going on 16 years. You're just talking and trick. How does your mother feel about it? Shh. Mother's coming. She's not really acquainted with my plans. Well, well, well. So this is Mr. Connor. Introduction is entirely unnecessary. I've heard so much about you from my boy. My family said, Tom, good gracious, why do you bring this power on to supper? I'd like to meet this nice young man instead of hearing him sing your praise so much. I don't know why my son is so standoffish. That's not some kind of behavior. Well, let's sit down and I think we could stand a little more air in here. Tom, open the door. I felt a nice fresh breeze a moment ago. Where has it gone to? So warm. I'm not afraid in summer. We're going to burn up when summer really gets started. However, we're having we're having very light supper. I think that things are better for this time of year. Same thing as light clothes are. Light food and light clothes are what this weather calls for. The season, when the season changes, takes us a while for us to adjust ourselves. You know, our blankets so thick during the winter. The seasons can change so quick this year. All of a sudden, heavens! Already summer. I ran to the trunk and pulled out this dress. Terribly old. Historical almost. But so so good. So good. It's cool and Mother? Good. Yes, honey. How about supper? You go our sister's supper, honey. Your sister's in full charge of supper. Tell her you hungry boys are waiting for. Have you met Laura? Oh my she. What you in? Oh. You always you've met. You know, it's rare for a the girl as sweet and pretty as Laura to be domestic. Glorious, thank heaven. Not only very pretty, but also very domestic. I am not at all. I never was a bit. I can never make anything but angel food cake. But in the South, we have so many servants. Gone, gone, gone. All the stitches of gracious living. Gone completely. All my callers were gentlemen and planters. So I assumed that I was married one. I had raised my family on a large piece of land with plenty of store servants. But man proposes, and women accept the proposal. To bury that old, old thing a little bit, I married no planter. I married a man who works for a telephone company, that gallantly smiling gentleman over there. Now he travels, and I don't even know where to. But what am I going on about? My tribulation. Tell me yours. I hope you don't have any. Tom? Yes, mother? Is supper nearly ready? Looks to me like supper's on the table. Oh, how lovely. But where's Laura? 
Laura is not feeling very well and says she better not come to the table. What? Nonsense. <laughs> Laura! Oh, Laura! Mother, we won't be seated until you come to the table. Come in, Mr. O'Connor. You sit here. Laura! Laura, darling, you keep us waiting. Laura! God's holy name be praised. Thank you. But I will give permission. 
portion. They were the guy who invented the first piece of chewing gum. Maybe, huh? The Rick had built in front of the Sex Chicago. I saw it when I went up to Century of Progress. Did you think of Century of Progress? No, I didn't. Well, it was quite a wonderful exhibition. What impressed me most was the whole of science. It gives you an idea of what the future will be like in the world. Even more wonderful than the present time. Tells me you're shocked. Is that right? I don't know. I took you to be an old fashioned type of girl. Well, I think that's a pretty good type to be. I hope you'll be a neat person. Do you? I believe I will take a piece of gum, if you don't mind. Mr. O'Connor, have you kept up with your singing? Singing? Me? Yes, I remember what a beautiful voice you had. What did you hear me sing? You heard me sing? Oh, yes, yes, very often. I don't suppose you remember me at all? No, I had an idea I've seen you before. I had an idea as soon as you opened the door. It seemed almost like I was about to remember your name, but the name that I was about to call you, or well, the name. And so I stopped myself before I said it. Wasn't it Blue Roses? Blue Roses? My gosh, yes! That's what I had on my tongue when you opened the door. Isn't it funny when trips remember plays? I didn't connect you with high school somehow or other, but that's where I was. It was high school. I didn't know you were Shakespeare's sister. Gosh. <coughs> I didn't expect you to. You barely <coughs> knew me. We did have speaking acquaintance, huh? Yes, we spoke to each other. What did you recognize? Oh, right away. As soon as I opened the door? When I heard your name, I thought it was probably you. I knew that Tom used to know you a little in high school. So when you came in the door, well, then I was sure. Couldn't say. I'm the sure is funny. Yes, yes, we didn't Ah, uh, didn't we have a, a class and something together? Oh, yes, we did. What was that? It was singing, chorus. Uh, Sat across the aisle from the yard. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And okay, now I remember. You always came in late. Yes, it was so hard for me getting upstairs. I had that brace on my leg. The clock so loud. I never heard the clock. To me, it sounded like thunder. Oh, uh, well, well, I never even noticed. And everybody was seated before I came in. I had to walk in front of all those people. My seat was in the back row. I had to go clumping all the way up the aisle with everyone watching. You shouldn't have been so conscious. You know, but I was. It was always such a relief when the singing started. I guess I place you now. I used to call you Blue Roses. How did I got to call me that? I was out of school a little while with fluorosis. When I came back, you asked me what was the matter. I said I had fluorosis. You thought I said Blue Roses. So that's what you always called me after that. Okay, huh? Oh no, I, I liked it. You see, I wasn't acquainted with any people. I remember you sort of stuck by yourself. Yes, it was so hard for me to make friends. I, it was so hard for me. I, I never could. Could overcome it? No, I, I never could. You mean being? Yes, it sort of stood between me. You should have let it. I know, but it did. And you shout. Yes. People are not so dreadful to you to know. That's what you have to remember. And you know, practically everybody's got some problems. Think yourself as having the only problems, being the only one who's disappointed. But it's not just you. Practically everybody's got some problems. And take me for example. I thought that when I was going to high school, I'd be further along now, six years later, than I am. Do you remember that one little right up I had in the door? Yes. It said that I was bound to succeed in anything I wanted to. Holy jeez! The torch! Here you are in the Pirates of Penzance. I sang the male lead, not opera. So beautifully. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes, beautifully, beautifully. You heard me? All three times. No. Yes. All three times? Yes. Why? I wanted to ask you to autograph my program. Well, what did you then? You were always surrounded by your own friends so much that I never had a chance to. You should have just... I know, but I thought you might think I was... Thought that you was... Home? I was beleaguered by females in those days. You were terribly popular. I was spoiled in high school. You had such a friendly way. Yeah. Everybody liked you. Including you? I, yes, I, I did too. Well, well, well. Give me that program, Laura. There you are. Better look than ever. How about a surprise? I think she's not 
worth very much right now, but maybe. Someday it will increase in value. Being disappointed is one thing, and being discouraged is another. I'm disappointed, but I'm not discouraged. I'm 23 years old. How old are you, Laura? I'll be 24 in June. That's not old age. No, but... You finished high school? I didn't go back. You mean you dropped out? I, I made bad grades in my final examination. How is Emily Meisenbach getting along? Heck, crap. How do you call her that? That's what she was. You're not still going with her? I never see her. Except in the personal section that you were engaged. I know, but I wasn't impressed by that propaganda. It wasn't the truth? Only in Emily's optimistic opinion. Oh. What have you done since high school, Lord? I said, what have you done since high school, Lord? Nothing much. You must have done something these six long years. Yes. Well, then, such as what? I took a business course at business college. How'd that work out? Not very well. I had to drop out. It gave me indigestion. <laughs> what are you doing now? I don't do anything much. Well, please don't think I sit around doing nothing. My glass collection takes up a good deal of time. Glass is something you take good care of. What did you say about glass? A collection, I said. I have one. You don't judge me a principal trouble with you. It's a theory art. Do you know what that is? That's what they call it when someone low rates himself. I understand, because I had too. Until I took a course in public speaking, developed my voice, and I learned that I had an aptitude for science. Before that time, I never thought of myself as being superior in any way whatsoever. Now, I know that I haven't been a very good study of it, but I have friends who say I can analyze a person better than a doctor to make a professional. I don't think that to be necessarily true, but I have, I have friends who say I do. Excuse me, Laura. I always take it out and play it. I use this piece of paper, right? I know how it is to get stuck on a shoe. Yep, that's what I judge to be your principal trouble. You lack the proper amount of confidence in yourself as a person. You don't have the right amount of faith in yourself. I'm based on a number of your remarks and certain observations of it. For instance, that pumping you thought was so awful in high school, I never even noticed it. You see, a little physical defect is what you have. I hardly noticed it. Magnified a thousand of times by imagination. You know what my strong advice to you would be? Think of yourself as superior to something. What would I think? What? You had a lie for it. Just look about you a little What do you see? A world full of common people. All of them born and all of them going to die. Which of them has one tenth of your good thoughts? Or mine? Or anyone else for that matter? Gosh! Everybody excels in some one thing, some another. Take me for instance. My interest happens to lie in blood dynamics. I take a course in radio engineering and go well, top fairly responsible job of the warehouse and study public speaking. Oh. Because I believe in the future of television. I wish to get on the ground floor. In fact, I've already made the right connections and all that matters is for the industry to get itself underway. Full steam. Knowledge. Sit. Money. Sit. Power. That's like the democracy is built on. I guess you think I think a lot of myself. No, I... Not about you. Is there something you take more interest in than anything else? Well, I do. As I said, I have my glass collection. I'm not quite sure I know what you mean. What kind of glass is it? Little articles of it. They're ornaments, mostly. Most of them are kind of the animals made out of glass. The tiniest little animals in the world. Mother calls them a glass menagerie. Here's an example of one, if you'd like to see it. This one's like the oldest. It's nearly 14. I'll be careful if you free the brakes. Oh, I better not take it. Pretty clumsy with things. Go on, I, I trust you with him. Here now, you're holding him gently. Hold him over the light. He loves the light. See how the light shines through it? It sure does shine. I shouldn't be partial, but he's my favorite. What kind of thing is this? How did you notice the single horn on his forehead? Unicorn, huh? Mm-hmm. Aren't you going to the bottom one? I know. Poor little fellow. Must feel so lonesome. Well, he is. He hasn't complained about it. He stays on the shelf with some other horses that don't have horns, and we all seem to get along nicely together. I did not. Like I said, he doesn't complain about it. Uh, what's that said? Put him on the table. I like to change the scenery once in a while. Well, well, well. Ha! Look at 
put in my shadow is my stretch. Oh yes, it stretches across the ceiling. I think the rain has stopped. Where does music come from? From the Paradise Dance Hall across the alley. And a cut the rug on this one, too. Oh, I... There's a program, though. We have one. Why every dance is taken. I just have to scratch the knock on it. Ah, a waltz. I can't dance. There you go. Give me your stuff. I've never danced in my life. Come on, then. Try. Oh, but I'd step on you. No, I'm made out of glass. How do we start? Speak to me. Hold your arm Like this? Yep, that's it. Now relax. That's the main thing. Don't. Hard not to. <laughs> Go tight now. That's the main thing about it. I'm afraid you can't budge me. Well, you better can't. Yes, you can. There you go, Lord. Now just let yourself go. I'm... Come on. Trying. There you are. Come on. Doing much better, yes. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Did we get on something? Yeah. Did something fall off it? Less force with the horn. Yes. Is it broken? No, it's just like all the other horses. It's lost its horn. It, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. But you'll never forgive me. That's probably your favorite piece of glass. No tragedy, Freckles. Glass breaks so easily. No matter how careful you are, the traffic throws the shells and things fall off with them. Still, I'll be sorry that would cause. I'll just imagine we had an operation. One was moved to make him feel less freakish. Now he'll feel more at home with the other horses, the ones that don't have horns. Now it's, it's very fun. Let's see how he's something human. You know, Laura, you are, well, very different. Surprisingly different from anyone else ever. Do you mind me telling you that? Me in a nice way. You make me feel sort of, gosh, I don't know how to say it. I'm usually pretty good at expressing things, but this is something I just don't know how to say. Has anyone ever told you that you were pretty? Well, you are. <coughs> in a very different way from anyone else. And all the better because it is. Confidence in yourself. I wish someone would build your confidence up and make you proud instead of shy, turning away and blushing. Some of you are kiss you. Delightful after the shower? 
refreshment. Jim, in the song about lemonade. Lemonade, lemonade, made a shade and stirred the spade. Good enough for any old maid. No, no, I've, I've never heard it. Why, Laura, you look so serious. We were having a serious conversation. Good. Now you're better acquainted. Yes. Tonight, I'm rejuvenating. You know, you modern young folks are much more serious minded than my generation. I was okay, the girl. You haven't changed, Mrs. Winfield. Now tonight, I'm rejuvenating the Katie vacation, Mr. O'Connor. Oh, I'm baptizing myself. Let me give you a hand. There now. I discovered we had some maraschino you know, cherries. I dumped them in, juice and all. I shouldn't have gone to that trouble, Mrs. Winfield. Trouble? Trouble? Why those blows of fun? Didn't you hear me cutting up in the kitchen? I bet your ears were burning. I was telling Tom how done I was with him for keeping him you to himself for such a long time. But now that you found your way, I want you, I want you to be a frequent caller. Not just occasional, but all the time. Oh, we're gonna have a lot of gay times together. I see them coming. Mm, just breathe that air. So fresh. Mm, it's so pretty. I'll skip back out. I know where it places when young folks are having a serious conversation. Don't go out with some The fact of the matter is I've got some going. Going? Now? Why, you're joking. It's only the shank of the evening, Mr. O'Connor. Well, you know how it is. You mean you're a young working man and have to keep working man's hour. We'll let you up early tonight, but only on the condition that you'll stay later next time. What's the best night for you? Isn't Saturday night the best night for you working men? Well, I've, I've got a couple of time clocks to punch those One in the morning and one at night. My, but you are ambitious. You work nights, too? No, man. Not, not work, but men. Betty! Betty! Who's Betty? Just a girl. The girl I go steady with. Oh, is it a serious romance, Mr. O'Connor? We're going to be married second Sunday in June. Oh, how nice. Tom did mention that you're going to be married. Well, cast out of the tag, where have you? You know how they are, they call you Romeo and stuff like that. It's been a wonderful evening, Mr. O'Connor. Hope it don't seem like I'm rushing off. I promise Betty I'd pick her up the old dance but by the time I get my jalopy down there, her train will be. You know, some women are, they keep you waiting. Yes, I know. The tyranny of women. Goodbye, Mr. O'Connor. Wish you luck, happiness, and success. All three of them. So does Laura. Don't you, Laura? Yes. Goodbye, Laura. Show me all the treasure that was soon near. Don't you forget. Good advice. So long, Shakespeare. Thank you. What? To entertain? 
meet some other girl's fiance? Go to the movies. Go. Don't think about us. Uh, mother, deserting. An unmarried sister who's crippled and no job. Don't let anything interfere with your selfish pleasures. Just go, go, go to the movies. All right, I will. The more you shout to me about my selfishness, the quicker I'll go. And I won't go to the movies. Go then, go to the moon, you selfish dreamer. I didn't go to the moon. I went much further. For time is the longest distance between two places. Not long after that, I was fired for writing a poem on the lid of a shoebox. I left St. Louis. I descended the steps of this fire escape for a final time and followed from then on my father's footsteps, attempting to find in motion what was lost in space. I traveled around a great deal. The city swept about me like dead leaves, leaves that were brightly colored, torn away from their branches. I would have stopped, but I was pursued by something. It always came upon me unaware, taking me altogether by surprise. Perhaps it was a familiar bit of music. Perhaps it is a piece of transparent glass. Perhaps I am walking along the street at night in some strange city before I have found companions. I pass the lighted window of a shop where perfume is sold. The window is filled with colorful bottles strewn around like bits of a shattered rainbow. All at once, my sister touches my shoulder. I turn around and I look into her eyes. Oh, Laura. Laura, I tried to leave you behind me, but I am more faithful than I intended to be. I cross the street, I run into a bar or the movies, order a drink. I speak to the nearest stranger, anything that can blow your candles out. For nowadays, the world is lit by lightning. Blow out your candles, Laura. And so, goodbye.